there's a difference between making an off uh, color joke or a sexist comment to to actually sexually assaulting someone without consent right touching someone or kissing someone and i felt like if i didn't speak my truth now nobody would know the truth and i thought that was important i was part of the 500 startups accelerator that was um, you know founded by dave mcclure so i i ran that company for a couple of years and then eventually i got acquired by walmart labs at the time, I was offered a job uh, back in Malaysia, where I was born. I was asked to be the founding CEO of Magic. But you worked with Dave McClure from 500 Startups as, as a part of this. He was an investor in my company. And before I went back to um, take on this role, we had talked about the possibility of creating an accelerator in Southeast Asia, a 500 Startups accelerator. And I thought that would really benefit the ecosystem. The week that Dave McClure flew over to Malaysia was the week that was when the incident happened. And I had my board meeting, um, invited him to come speak. And then after the board meeting, him and a few other 500 startups employees and a couple of friends uh, came over to my apartment. Take me to what happened that night. So they came over after dinner and we, you know, started out pretty normal, you know, just jamming on ideas. And they had brought whiskey over and it was my apartment. So I thought, oh, yeah, sure, I'll drink, right? Uh, but Dave kept pouring whiskey into my cup and before I even finished it, he kept pouring and sometimes we were in a conversation, I couldn't keep track of how many drinks I had. All of a sudden, people were tired and they ordered their Ubers and they wanted to leave. So when everyone left, Dave was there, he didn't leave. And I'm like, oh, um, Dave, do you want to leave too? And I'm like, do you want to crash here? Are you okay? You, you, you drunk? You can crash on my couch or I have a guest room, right? And then I went to my bedroom. And then he followed me into my room and that's when he started uh, propositioning me, suggesting that we sleep together. And, and I was like, no, no, like, you know, what are you doing? Um, I have a boyfriend, remember? <laughs> and this is not okay. I told him, you know, I think you have to leave. I was leading him out, showing him the door. Pretty close to the door, he pushed me and pu pushed himself onto me and um, started kissing me. <laughs> um, and I kept saying no, and I, um, I remember him saying, just one night only, please, just one time. Um, I just can't forget those words. What was going through your head? He knows I have a boyfriend, he has a wife, he has kids. Like, oh my God, like, what do I do? What if he used force, more force on me? So I, I was pretty shocked um, and uh, didn't quite know what to do beyond just pushing him away. I think um, because of him being the investor, the funder, he has access to all, all, a lot of um, entrepreneurs, right? And he, he's actually known for being a huge supporter of minorities and female entrepreneurs specifically. And a lot of entrepreneurs rely on that first check to get started. And when Dave plays the role of giving the first check, that is a lot of power. How did that evening make you feel? It was traumatizing. I called my boyfriend right after and I felt like I couldn't speak up because we had this uh, deal that we were going to do to bring an accelerator to Southeast Asia. This was a deal that I felt was too risky to, if I came, if I spoke, I had reported him or spoken up, that he, he wouldn't bring the accelerator to Asia. And I felt like this, this is not about me and my company. This was about um, the larger ecosystem in Southeast Asia. You were worried that if you said anything, that you know the money that he was going to commit and, and the role that he was supposed to play, that would go away. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think it's, it's a problem because there was a, a huge power dynamic at play here. So it's not easy to talk about these things, uh, first of all, and you're putting yourself at risk if, if you go on record in terms of there are career repercussions. Some people are fundraising at a time. They don't want to jeopardize their ability to fundraise. It certainly seems like harassment is horrific, but it's in all industries. So what makes it, what makes the technology industry, the industry that you're in, unique? Startups have a culture of being transparent and, you know, uh, agile and, you know, uh, a little bit of, of um, 
you know, a bro culture, right? You know, you have parties and uh, you, you do a lot of business dealings outside of the work environment, outside of the office. Um, so there are a lot of situations where these kinds of things could happen, right? Most venture capitalists are male. And so they're put in this position of power, right? To, to provide funding for female or, or male entrepreneurs. So when a female entrepreneur is fundraising, she could be put in a position where um, the VC could exert um, power to get her to do certain things in return for funding or access or referrals. What do you believe is a solution? I think one of the best ways to start thinking about creating a clear transparent policy around sexual harassment is to firstly define the different levels of harassment um, and that the appropriate punishment be assigned to the different levels. There has to be a clear, a safe channel for yeah of reporting these incidents, um, whether or not you wish to be anonymous or named, um, there should be, uh, it should be very clear who you can report these incidents to.